Hello, TGIF. Thank goodness it's Friday. Happy Friday, everyone. It's time to get started with Lesson 22 Concept Development Video. Today, we are going to be taking um, a step forward in our division practice. The last two days were kind of the same lesson, just building up that uh, practice and stamina. And now we're going to go shift into three-digit and four-digit dividends divided by two-digit divisors. So that's nothing's really changed in that practice, but what's going to change is that our quotients are gonna be two digits. So our answers are going to be 10 or more um, with remainders. So we're gonna still be working with those remainders. Um, the way that the lesson's gonna change or how we divide is gonna change is the fact that we're going to be breaking the dividend apart in different units and, and so that we can work within um, that math number and make it more manageable. Hopefully that'll make sense as we start practicing. So let's go ahead and shift to the next page. Let me put my screen down so I can actually write on it. And we are going to practice with, all right, let's work on the expression 590 divided by 17. Okay, so let's go ahead and set it up in standard algorithm real quick. We'll still be doing the estimations to help us figure out a starting point. Um, so just before we do that, let's just set it up. 17, 590 divided by 17. Dividend goes inside the den, the divisor's on the outside, and the quotient will go on top. Now, we know that 17 is going to round to nearly 20. So we'll keep that in mind as we're thinking about an estimate when we are trying to figure out how close we can get to the answer or our starting point for our quotient. So we think 17 is the number. We can think of 20 when we want to estimate. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we start in the hundreds place. Can we divide the hundreds into those 17 groups? Well, we have five in the hundreds place. Can we split five or distribute five equally to the 17 groups? I'm hoping you're saying no right now because no, we need at least 17 to be able to divide equally, right? We need to have the same number of, as our divisor to at least have one equal group. Well, we can't do five into 17. So we have to go to the next place value. So now we're talking about five and nine, 59, but we're in the tens place. So we, we, we can kind of forget about the, that. And, we, and this is why I have this little box. We're gonna, Oh, I wish it was, let me see if I can bring it forward and cover that up. Bring forward, bring forward. Oh man, best laid plans. Let me see if this one works. Oops, I didn't want two of them. Oh, I was hoping this would cover up the work and it obviously didn't. But if we were thinking, you can just kind of not think about that zero right now because 59, is definitely larger than 17, right? 59 is close to 20. I mean, 59 is close to 60, 17 is close to 20. So let's see how close we can get 20, 40, 60. So three groups of 20 would give us close to this number. So now we can go ahead. I don't know what 17 times three is, but we have to figure it out. Three times one is three plus two more is 51. Great. Now, let's see how many tens are remaining after we divide 59 tens by 17. Well, we can divide three equal groups. When we use three equal groups, we get 51, and we're left with a remainder of eight. Now, in the last couple lessons, this was, we were done because we were done with all the digits of the dividend. But just like earlier in the year, when we have large uh, numbers and we don't use all of the digits inside the dividend, we need to bring it down until we're finished, finished with all of the dividend. Well, now we're working with 80. What would be a good starting number for our quotient? Again, think about your estimate. Well, we think 20 is close to 17, so 20, 40. And if you can't count by, like, by 20s, count by two tens, two tens, four tens, six tens, eight tens, or 20, 40, 60, 80. That was four different groups. Let's try that. Oh, I don't know what that is off the top of my head. So let's do 17 times four, 28. Four times one is four plus one more is 68. Let's see if that was the right number. 
And no, remember, this is, I saw this in class today. Um, some of us were forgetting when we get here, we still have to do our regrouping. We still have to have sound subtraction skills. So 10 minus eight is two, seven minus six is one. The remainder is smaller than our divisor. So I know I'm done. 34 with a remainder of 12. Q equals 34, R equals 12. And because I like to push you guys and teach you like mathematicians and not as fifth grade students, I like you to represent it as a fraction. Well, the quotients are whole number. There's 34 whole groups that were equally passed out, but then there was 12 leftover pieces out of the whole divisor of 17, because every time we have 17, we can make a new group. So 34, 12 seventeenths, or an easier way to say it is 34, 12 over 17. So good job, guys. Now we need to do the check. Now, when our quotients are two digit answers, that means our multiplication check is gonna be a little bit more challenging. So let's go ahead and do our check. We want quotient times divisor plus remainder. And I'm gonna go ahead and place those parentheses around the multiplication part because we're gonna to have to do that first. Well, our quotient is 34 and our divisor is 17. So we need to multiply that plus our 12 remaining. Well, I don't know about you, but I can't do that part in my head. I need to stack it and do standard algorithm. Now, if you need to do area models still you can, but it's gonna slow you down. 21 plus two is 23. And then when we multiply by ones, it's a little easier, right? Now we got eight, seven, 578. And I need to add 12 to that. Two ones plus eight ones would be zero. And that would carry over a group, nine, 590. And that is exactly what our dividend is. And that is a beautiful problem that we have just done. Nice job. This is going to be a little clunky, I promise you. Um, if you're really getting it, kudos to you. Way to keep practicing. Um, and if you're not there yet, that's okay. We're going to get there and we're going to do this practice quite a bit. This is a challenging skill. But when we know our facts, when we know the steps and our concepts, we can just, we just need to get comfortable with the steps. Okay. You guys are really good at this stuff. Let's go ahead and try another one. Um, let's work on the expression 887 divided by 27. Let's go ahead and set it up. 27 divided, or 887 divided by 27. We always say the dividend first, even when it's inside the den and it looks second. Um, 887 divided by 27. Now, whoops, whoa, what happened? Mr. Briggs didn't want to do that. All right, sorry, back to it. Now, well, what would we... at we're not writing the sentences down, but we, we still wanna think about our estimation. Well, we're gonna say 27 is close to 30. We'll keep that in our minds, right? All right, now we look at the first digit of the dividend. We have eight hundreds. Can we divide eight into 27 groups? Hopefully the answer is no right away because you know we need at least 27 of something to have one equal group. Okay, so that means we need to look to this next place value. Well, now we're talking tens. But again, you can forget right now, at this moment, you can forget about that seven. We'll deal with him later or her, um, but we'll deal with that person, that digit later. And we're dealing with 88 divided by 27. Well, 88 is definitely larger than 27. So we know that there's at least one equal group. Uh, and this is where we do our estimate to try to figure out what's the starting point. Well, let's count by threes because this is three tens, right? So three tens, three, six, nine. Okay, we're looking at, 88. And so if we're counting by three tenths, 30, 60, 90. Which one do you think we should try? That you, I think you could go either go with 60 or 90. I want to try 90 because I know that I rounded this up and 90 is a little bit higher than the 88. So it might work. So that was my reasoning on why I want to try three. If you try two and it doesn't work, then just go ahead and, um, work from there. So I'm going to try three. Now it was three out of the 88. We weren't working with that seven yet. So I want to make sure that is lined up over that place value. And then I don't know what 27 times three is. I know it's going to be a little bit more than 75 because three times 25 is 75, but let's see what it becomes. 
3 times 7 is 21. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 more is 81. That's pretty close. Oh, that is definitely smaller than 88. So I think I chose the right one to start with. But if you chose 2, you would recognize that your remaining part right here would be more than 27. And that means you'd want to redo that step because the if you don't redo that step, then your life gets really difficult on the next digit that you bring down. So really think about, is my remainder larger than my divisor? If it is, I need to rework it. If it isn't, I'm gonna keep moving forward. Well, we haven't finished with the dividend. We're not done with 887. So I'm gonna bring the seven down. And now we're working with 77. Again, that is larger than 27. So I know I can divide. Well, I already know that three groups is, of 27 is 81. So that's more than 77. So I'm going to have to try two. Well, what's 27 times two? Well, that will be two times two is four plus one is 54. Okay, let's try that. Let's subtract that. Let me scroll down so I have room, room. Again, make sure your top's ready. It is on this one. I don't have any regrouping, but our remainder is 23. Ask yourself every single time, is your remainder smaller or larger than, I shouldn't even say smaller or larger. Is it greater than or less than your divisor? If it's greater than your divisor, rework that step because there's another, at least one more group that you can equally take out of it. And if it's um, smaller than it, you're done. You got the opportunity to just be, oops, I don't want the highlighter, to be done. Oh, I still kept it. Remainder 23. Q equals 32, R equals 23. And then we want to show it as a fraction, 32 holes. And there was 23 remaining parts of 27. So great job showing the answer. Now we have to do the check. And that's quotient times divisor plus remainder. There's a reason why I show that and say those words every single time. I want that to be comfortable and secure for you. So our quotient is 32. Our divisor is 27. So we already know two digit times two digit. We got to set it up. If you're using area model, here's another spot where you want to start practicing standard algorithm. Area model is going to take a long time just to do your check on your math. I'm going to do the, the standard algorithm over here. I think you see where I'm writing. Um, make sure I got the right numbers, 32 times 27, that's right. So seven times two is 14. Seven times three is 21, plus one more is 22. Uh, let me scroll down so I have some more room. Um, place my zero, two times two is four, two times three is six. Let's add it up. Four, six, eight, 864. Let me put that over here, 864. Now I'm gonna add my 23. Well, I can do that in my head because there's no regrouping. The ones would be seven, the tens would be eight, hundreds would be eight. That is exactly my dividend. Beautiful check mark. I love it. Satisfying to me. All right, one more problem together, and then you will move to your uh, problem set practice. Um, check your work to the answer sheet that I have, and then go ahead and move to your exit ticket, right? Again, I'm going to be asking for your feedback around the problem set. Do you like me just posting the answers? or would you like me to be posting the videos like I used to? All right, so last one to do together, um, 839 divided by 41. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and set it up standard algorithm, 839 inside the den, because it's the dividend, and the divisor of 41 on the outside. Now, don't have to write it, but I'm gonna go ahead and think it. 41 is close to 40. So I'm going to be using that to help me make my estimations. Again, if it's a two digit number, we know that we probably can't divide from the first place value, but can we divide 800s into 41 groups equally? No, we would have to have parts. So we're gonna go to 83. Now that's like eight tens, 83 is eight tens. So we're trying to get close to eight tens or 80. Well, four, eight, 12, and I'm talking 410, so it's 40, 80, 120. So I think it's two groups is what we're gonna start with, right? So 41 times two, um, 82, right? So, oh, that's perfect. That's smaller than our dividend, which means we have 
a remainder of one. And the remainder is smaller than our divisor. So we know we're ready to move on to the next digit of our dividend. And we're gonna go ahead and bring that nine down and we're working with 19. Now this is interesting. Can you divide 19 into 41 equal groups? I'm pausing because I really want you to think about this. 19 smaller than 41. So can you divide it into equal groups? And the answer is no. We need at least 41, like we've been talking about these last couple of days. We need at least the amount that the divisor is to have one equal group. Well, 19 less than 41. So that's not going to be doing it. So what do we do? Well, we represent that we can't do it by showing a zero. We cannot divide equally 19 into 41 groups. Well, what is 41 groups of zero? Exactly, it's zero. So you're gonna subtract zero. That's your remaining remainder. So it turns out that 20 with a remainder of 19. So the quotient's 20, the remainder is 19. And if I showed it as a fraction, it would be 20 and 19 over 41. Let's do our check. Quotient times divisor plus remainder. So I got my quotient of 20 times my divisor of 41 plus my remain and put that in parentheses. We need to do that first plus my remainder of 19. Now I don't know what 20 times 41 is, so I'm just going to go ahead. And, well, actually I do because this is like saying two tens times 41, right? Well, I've already done that over here. I just need to think about it as tens now. Well, if this is tens, well, then that's 820 plus 19. Well, that's 839, isn't it? And because that's right, that means we can do that satisfying check mark. And I absolutely love it. It's so satisfying. And now um, you are on to your problem set. So I'll should have the, oops, move that out of my face. I will show you the answers on the problem set. Go ahead and check those for me. I know this can be clunky. Please let me know if you need my support. We can connect over email, Zoom, um, or whatever we need to do to help you feel comfortable. All right? If this is a bear, stop. And we, you and I can work on it together, either via Zoom or in class. So good job, guys. Way to keep working hard at your math. You guys are doing great. Thank you. And I am done. Let me end my meeting. Oops. Now you see all of me. Uh.